Hi everyone, welcome back. I am up to reading chapter 14. Now, chapter 14 has, is being read to you in two different parts. What I want you to think about, as I always say, is what has happened in the past. What has happened in chapter 13, because that helps you catch up to what is about to happen, so it sets you back in the right frame of mind. Also, those three most important details. Now that we're actually 13 chapters in, you may have a few more than three, but see if you can just narrow it down to the three most important events that has happened so far in the text. It's not easy, but that's part of the challenge of it, is that you work it out. And different, um, there might be different answers for different students, depending on how they look at what is important and what is not important. There may not be necessarily one set outline, but everyone should have at least, I think, two the same as everyone else. So, chapter 14, Norbert the Norwegian Ridgeback. Quirrell, however, must have been braver than they'd thought. In the weeks that followed, he did seem to be getting paler and thinner, but it didn't look as though he'd cracked yet. So think back to that conversation in the forest that Harry was listening into. Who was Quirrell talking to? What were they discussing? And then Harry had a chat with Ron and Hermione about it. And what was the discussion then about Quirrell? Every time they passed the third floor corridor, Harry, Ron and Hermione would press their ears to the door to check that Fluffy was still growling inside. Snape was sweeping about in his usual bad temper, which surely meant that the stone was still safe. Whenever Harry passed Quirrell these days, he gave him an encouraging sort of smile and Ron had started telling people off for laughing at Quirrell's stutter, which probably isn't something we should do anyway. We certainly don't laugh at um, things other people have. It's not something Quirrell can change. So it's really disappointing that anyone would do that. Hermione, however, had more on her mind than the Philosopher's Stone. She had started drawing up revision timetables and colour coding all of her notes. Harry and Ron wouldn't have minded, but she kept nagging them to do the same. Hermione, the exams are ages away. Ten weeks, Hermione snapped. That's not ages. That's like a second to Nicholas Flamel. So remember, Nicholas Flamel was over, I think, was at 600 years old. So that's why ten weeks would go just like that for him. But we're not 600 years old, Ron reminded her. Anyway... What are you revising for? You already know it all. What am I revising for? Are you mad? You realise we need to pass these exams to get into the second year. They're very important. I should have started I should have started studying months ago. I don't know what's got into me. Unfortunately, the teachers seem to be thinking along the same lines as Hermione. They piled so much homework on them that the Easter holidays weren't nearly as much fun as the Christmas ones. It was hard to relax with Hermione next to you reciting the 12 uses of dragon's blood or practicing wand movements. Moaning and yawning, Harry and Ron spent most of their free time in the library with her, trying to get through all their extra work. I'll never remember this, Ron burst out one afternoon, throwing down his quill and looking longingly out of the library window. It was the first really fine day they'd had in months. The sky was clear, forget-me-not blue, and there was a feeling in the air of summer coming. The sky was clear, forget-me-not blue. Forget-me-nots are a type of flowers for those that do not know. Once again, if it's something you didn't know, have a think when you discover new vocabulary in a book. Would not knowing stop you from reading on? Do you think not knowing is going to make a change in what is going to happen in the story or change your understanding and comprehension of what's going to happen. Harry, who was looking up Dittany in 1000 Magical Herbs and Fungi, didn't look up until he heard Ron say, Hagrid, what are you doing in the library? Hagrid shuffled into view, hiding something behind his back. He looked very out of place in his moleskin coat. Just looking, he said in a shifty voice that got their interest at once. And what are you lot up to? He looks suddenly suspicious. You're not still looking for Nicholas Flamel, are you? Oh, we found out who he is ages ago, Ron said impressively. And 
We know what the dog's guarding. It's a philosophist. Shh! Hagrid looked around quickly to see if anyone else was listening. Don't go shouting about it. What's the matter with you? There are a few things we wanted to ask you, as a matter of fact, said Harry, about what's guarding the stone apart from Fluffy. Shh! Said Hagrid again. Listen, come and see me later. I'm not promising I'll tell you anything. Mind, but don't go rabbiting about it here. Students aren't supposed to know. They'll think I've told you. See you later then, said Harry. Hagrid shuffled off. So how do you think Harry, Ron and Hermione are feeling now that they're allowed to go and see Hagrid? What type of questions have they got swimming around in their minds that they want to ask him? What would you want to know most of all? What was he hiding behind his back? said Hermione thoughtfully. Do you think it anything do you think it had anything to do with the stone? I'm going to see what section he was in, said Ron, who'd had enough of working. He came back a minute later with a pile of books in his arms and slammed them down on the table. Dragons, he whispered. Hagrid was looking up stuff about dragons. Look at these, dragon species of Great Britain and Ireland. From Egg to Inferno, a dragon keeper's guide. Hagrid's always wanted a dragon. He told me so the first time I ever met him, said Harry. But it's against our laws, said Ron. Dragon breeding was outlawed by the Warlocks Convention of 1709. Everyone knows that. It's hard to stop muggles noticing us if we're keeping dragons in the back garden. Anyway, you can't, you can't tame dragons. It's dangerous. You should see the burns Charlie got off wild ones in Romania. But there aren't any dra... Sorry, I'll start that again. But there aren't any wild dragons in Britain, said Harry. Of course there are, said Ron. Commonwealth Green and Heribian Blacks. The Ministry of Magic has a job hushing them up, I can tell you. Our lot have to keep putting spells on muggles who've spotted them to make them forget. So what on earth's Hagrid up to, said Hermione. When they knocked on the door of the gamekeeper's hut an hour later, they were surprised to see that all of the curtains were closed. Hagrid called, Who is it? Before he let them in and then shut the door quickly behind them. It was stiflingly, stiflingly hot inside. Even though it was such a warm day, there was a fire blazing in the grate. Hagrid made them tea and offered them stoke sandwiches, which they refused. I wonder what stoat is. I'll have to think about that. I might have to look that up. Do you know? So, yeah. So, you wanted to ask me something? Yes, said Harry. There was no point beating around the bush. We were wondering if you could tell us what's guarding the Philosopher's Stone apart from Fluffy. Hagrid frowned at him. Of course I can't, he said. Number one, I don't know myself. Number two, you know too much already, as I wouldn't tell you if I could. So I wouldn't tell you if I could. That stone's here for a good reason. It was almost stolen out of Gringotts. I suppose you've worked that out and all. Beats me how you even know about Fluffy. Oh, come on, Hagrid. You might not want to tell us, but you do know. You know everything that goes on around here, said Hermione in a warm, flattering voice. Hagrid's beard twitched and they could tell he was smiling. We only wondered who had done the guarding, really, Hermione went on. We wondered who Dumbledore had trusted enough to help him, apart from you. Hagrid's just swelled at these last words. Harry and Ron beamed at Hermione. Well, I don't suppose it could hurt to tell you that. Let's see, he borrowed Fluffy from me. Then some of the teachers did enchantments. Professor Sprout, Professor Flitwick, Professor McGonagall. He ticked them all off on his fingers. Professor Quirrell and Dumbledore did, and Dumbledore himself did something. Of course, Hang on, I've forgotten someone. Oh yeah, Professor Snape. Snape? Yeah, you're not still on about that, are you? Look, Snape helped protect the stone. He's not about to steal it. Harry knew Ron and Hermione were thinking the same as he was. If Snape had been in on protecting the stone, it must have been easy to find out how the other teachers had guarded it. He probably knew everything, except, it seemed, Quirrell's spell and how to get past Fluffy. You're the only one who knows how to get past Fluffy, aren't you, Hagrid? Said Harry anxiously. And you wouldn't tell anyone, would you? Not even the teachers. Not a soul knows except me and Dumbledore, said Hagrid proudly. Well, that's something, Harry muttered to the others. Hagrid, can we have a window open? I'm boiling. 
Can't. Harry, sorry, said Hagrid. Harry noticed him glance at the fire. Harry looked at it too. Hagrid, what's that? But he already knew what it was. In the very heart of the fire, underneath the kettle, was a huge black egg. So, what is it? It's a huge black egg. They've told us. Or is there something I'm missing by just reading huge black egg and leaving it at that? Are you predicting or do you already know what is inside the black egg? Ah, said Hagrid, fiddling nervously with his beard. That's, uh, where did you get it, Hagrid? Said Ron, crouching over the fire to get a closer look at the egg. It must have cost you a fortune. Won it, said Hagrid, last night. I was down in the village having a few drinks and got into a game of cards with a stranger. Think he was quite glad to get rid of it, to be honest. But what are you going to do with it when it's hatched? Said Hermione. Well, I've been doing some reading, said Hagrid, pulling a large book out from under his pillow. Got this out of the library. Dragon breeding for pleasure and profit. It's a bit out of date, of course, but it's all in here. Keep the egg in the fire, because their mothers breathe on them, see? And when it hatches, feed it a bucket of brandy mixed with chicken blood every half hour. And see here, how to recognise different eggs. What I got there is a, Nor a Norwegian Ridgeback. They're rare, them. He looked very pleased with himself, but Hermione didn't. Hagrid, you live in a wooden house, she said. But Hagrid wasn't listening. He was humming merrily as he stoked the fire. So now they had something else to worry about. What might happen to Hagrid if anyone found out he was hiding an illegal dragon in his hut? Wonder what it's like to have a peaceful life, Ron sighed. As evening after evening they struggled through all of the extra homework they were getting, Hermione had now started making revision times tables for Harry and Ron too. It was driving them mad. Then, one breakfast time, Hedwig brought Harry another note from Hagrid. He'd written only two words. It's hatching. Ron wanted to skip herbology and go straight down to the hut. Hermione wouldn't hear of it. Hermione, how many times in our lives are we going to see a dragon hatching? We've got lessons. We'll get in trouble. And that's nothing to what Hagrid's going to be in when someone finds out about what he's doing. Oh, shut up, Harry whispered. Mal Malfoy was only a few feet away and he had stopped dead to listen. How much had he heard? Harry didn't like the look on Malfoy's face at all. Ron and Hermione argued all the way to Herbology, and in the end, Hermione agreed to run down to Hagrid's with the other two during morning break. When the bell sounded from the castle at the end of their lesson, the three of them dropped their trowels at once and hurried through the grounds to the edge of the forest. Hagrid greeted them, looking flushed and excited. So it said the three of them dropped their trowels at once. What were the three of them doing during their lesson? Now, I also want you to take a moment to think about the three characters, Harry, Ron and Hermione, and think about how different they are to each other. And who do you think leads the group? Is there a leader or do you think they're very even in their roles of the group? It's nearly out, he ushered them inside. The egg was lying on the table. Oops, I missed a couple of lines, so I'm going to go back up. When the bell sounded from the castle at the end of the lesson, the three of them dropped their trowels at once and hurried through the grounds to the edge of the forest. Hagrid greeted them, looking very flushed and excited. It's nearly out, he ushered them inside. The egg was lying on the table. There were deep cracks in it. Something was moving inside. A funny clicking sound was coming from it. They all drew their chairs up to the table and watched with bated breath. All at once there was a scraping noise and the egg split open. The baby dragon flopped onto the table. It wasn't exactly pretty. Harry thought it looked like a crumpled black umbrella. Its spiny wings were huge compared to its skinny jet body. And it had a long snout with wide nostrils, stubs of horns and bulging orange eyes. It sneezed. A couple of sparks blew out of its snout. Isn't he beautiful, Hagrid murmured. He reached out a hand to stroke the dragon's head. It snapped his fingers, showing pointed fangs. Bless him, look, he knows his mummy, said Hagrid. Hagrid, said Hermione, how fast do Norwegian Ridgebacks grow exactly? Hagrid was about to answer when the colour suddenly drained from his face. 
He leapt to his feet and ran to the window. What's the matter? Someone was looking through the gap in the curtains. It's a kid. He's running back up to the school. Harry bolted to the door and looked out. Even at a distance, there was no mistaking him. So who was it that they have seen bolting away? So Harry bolted to the door and they've seen the kid bolting away, running as fast as can be. I'm going to take a break and I'm going to see you for part two of chapter 14. Bye.